Hi, this is Tim Donner with the latest edition of the Election 2020 Roundtable from Liberty Nation TV. Will the Ukraine-China scandals prove to be Joe Biden's version of the Hillary Clinton email scandal? How can he explain it all away? Does his huge lead in the polls mean the base loves Joe Biden or just that he's best positioned to beat Donald Trump? Is the Democrat voter base really as radical as the outspoken progressives make it appear? Joining us to discuss and analyze is our chief political correspondent, Graham Noble, and national correspondents, Sarah Cowgill and Joe Schaefer. And Joe, let's start with you. The scandals involving Joe Biden and his son Hunter regarding Ukraine and China, you know, are on things that happened years ago and can't be changed. So is this going to be, do you think, as damaging to Joe Biden as the email scandal was to Hillary Clinton? Well, uh, one would hope so if we had an honest media and uh, informed citizens across the the spectrum who really cared. Uh, I have my doubts because, you know, I'm still waiting for Dianne Feinstein to be investigated about the hundreds of millions of dollars that her and her husband made in China while she was um, working uh, in the Senate uh, uh, on behalf of, of, of better trade with China. And yeah, she's, she's not running for president, but she ran for the Senate re-election in the Senate in one of the biggest states in the country, California, and nothing. I mean, there was some, some, some tenuous reporting on it at first, and then it was able to be ignored. So they're able to sweep things under the carpet that I'm shocked that they're still able to get away with in the internet age. There's going to be attention from it from the conservative side and, the, and, and that'll get it out there. But I don't think the big media is gonna cooperate. They're gonna be shameless about it. And it's really up to the moderates, the, the un, undecided voters to decide how engaged they wanna be in this because it is a very important talking points and Joe Biden's hoping that people are just going to take the mainstream media cue and not pay attention. So, Graham, this uh, scandal regarding the Ukraine, we won't even get to China yet, but just involving the Ukraine was when Joe Biden was vice president and in charge of all financial dealings with Ukraine. His son, uh, four months after he was denied a place in the military because he tested positive for, for cocaine. This is Hunter Biden. <laughs> was given a a place on the board of Burisma Holdings, a generally believed to be a shady energy company, the largest one in Ukraine. And when the investigator, uh, the lead investigator in Ukraine set his sights on this company, Joe Biden made a trip to to, uh, Ukraine, intervened and threatened to pull Ukraine's loan guarantees. This seems like a clear case of influence pendling How does Joe Biden try to explain this all away? Well, the question, Tim, is is will he have to? Because I tend to agree with Joe that this is not going to, uh, neither this nor the Chinese connections are going to figure too uh, too prominently. Um, And I think they should. I think they are uh, enormous problems for someone who was the vice president and is now running for president. Uh, his connections, particularly to China, and then this whole thing where he basically uh, almost committed extortion in the Ukraine, almost extorted the Ukrainians, um, and then bragged about it shamelessly on television afterwards. Um, I think there are enormous problems, but I don't think uh, anybody is going to delve too deeply into them. Uh, so I don't know how much they're really going to figure at all into the into the larger picture. Well, it's going to be relatively easy for Biden, I suppose, to sidestep those things in the Democratic primary, Sarah, because it would embarrass the Obama administration. uh, And that's not something any Democrat wants to do. But in a general election campaign, I don't know how he's going to be able to sidestep this. So tell me how you think he might sidestep uh, this very serious matter regarding Ukraine and China. And 
Also, answer us the question of whether you think that Biden's ever growing lead over Bernie Sanders. I mean, he's now ahead by two to one, like 35 to 16 percent, 17 percent. Nobody else in single figures. Does this does this mean Joe Biden uh, is really loved by the Democrat base or are they just making the calculation that he is best positioned to defeat Donald Trump? Well, if you've noticed Nobody, the media, no other Democrats, they're not hurling insults or anything at each other. It's really, really early to be worried about a lead like Biden has right now. There's plenty of time for the media to turn on him. There's plenty of time for the Democratic Party to cheat, as they did in 2016. So at this point, we're in a we're in a marathon. It's not the sprint yet. And it's anything can happen. So I think he's just going to stay mom. He's not going to respond to questions. The media is going to dial it back and just continue their attacks on Trump and hope that the best, you know, the cream of the crop rises with the Democrats in the in the field. So, Joe, let's let's go take another angle on this Biden massive lead over Bernie Sanders and the other 22 candidates in the field. Um He's got 36 percent of the vote in a 24 man field. That's actually pretty 24 person field. That's actually pretty impressive. Does it show, do you think, that the Democrat voter base isn't nearly as radical as the outspoken progressives would make it appear? The ones you see on TV all the time and the candidates with their radical proposals. Is the base not really quite as radical as it may appear based on the Democratic presidential field? Uh, I don't agree with that. No, I think that this is a, a phony artificial lead that Biden has, mostly from name recognition. And I, I saw a Pew Research um, poll that came out just the other day, said only 3% of Democrats want someone over the age of 70 to be their nominee. So only 3% of, of likely Democratic voters feel that way, and yet he has this enormous lead. It, it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem genuine to me. I do think that the, de- the, the typical grassroots Democratic voter, the one who's going to be motivated to go out and vote in a Democratic primary, is much more progressive than Joe, Bi- Joe Biden is representing himself as. Um, they're, they're looking for someone more committed to the left than that. And I think, again, Bernie Sanders, even though he is too old as well, it, it is positioned nicely for that. They want someone younger. They don't have anyone younger who's who's got substance, who has merit, who, who who's stepping up to the plate. Again, I think they're hoping someone's going to emerge in the debates and, and make it easier for them. But they're 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 not looking to Joe Biden. Uh, it is a more left leaning base, and as this process develops, you're going to see movement away from Biden. It's going to, it won't be like prominent. It'll just be slow and steady like the stream and his numbers are just going to slowly, but you know, fairly swiftly as well. It just evaporate. Okay. Now Graham and Sarah, I'm going to put you in the rather awkward position of pretending that you're strategist for the Joe Biden campaign. You're looking at an election that's about 18 months out. You've got a huge lead over a field that's entirely different than you. You've got basically all progressives. And then you've got yourself, who's sort of an old time liberal Obama administration fixture. You've got Donald Trump looming in the distance. But first, you've got to win the primary. Do you have to sound more progressive or less progressive than the others? So, uh, Graham, first to you, if you're giving Joe Biden advice on the best way to run a campaign here in June of 2019, what do you advise him? If I was his advisor, I would tell him to run as uh, the third term of Barack Obama and say that, uh, you know, it was, uh, it should have happened last time around, but it was basically uh, stolen from the Democrats. And now, uh, you know, after the relative disaster of 2016 um he is back to save the day uh he is the man that has all of the connections both national and international he knows how congress works uh he's been a senator he's been the vice president he's he's just way more qualified than anybody else in the field 
and and he's come back to save the Democratic Party from from teetering towards the abyss. Uh, and, and really, that's how I would I, I would do it. I, I would basically set myself up. If if I were Biden, I'd set myself up as I'm the I'm the sage, I'm the elder who's who's stepping in to to right the ship. Okay, well, that seems like a viable strategy on one hand, but Sarah, that's basically the same strategy that Hillary Clinton used in 2016. Now, Joe Biden appears to be a lot more likable than Hillary Clinton, to be sure. But is that a strategy you think will work, Sarah? Uh, if you had Joe Biden's ear, what would you be advising him? Well, I don't think I would go the full, let's be Obama 2.0. I, I think that there's too many people that were disappointed in the Obama years. Um, my, I would tell creepy Uncle Joe that it would be best if he acted like the adult in the room, became the mediator, bringing the progressives up a little notch or two in class and and maybe taking some focus away from Nancy Pelosi, who's just a poison pill these days to her own party. So instead of instead of equating myself to the past and where I was, I would I would say Joe Biden needs to be the 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 negotiator. He needs to out negotiate Trump. He needs to be able to tamp down the anti-Semitic stuff that's going on with the progressives. He needs to squash this, uh, you know, Green New Deal and make it a little more legitimate. He needs to stop trying to be a progressive. He's not. He's an old dog Democrat. And that's his that's his strength in this. Wow, Sarah, I think you missed your calling or or maybe you had that calling once and now you're sharing with us the benefits of having done it. Oh, just uh, a little bit in my past. Yes, the calling. All right. I want to thank uh, Graham Noble, our chief political correspondent at LibertyNation.com and national correspondent Sarah Cowgill and Joe Schaefer. Thank you, uh, guys and gal. Appreciate it. And we'll be back at you next week with another uh, 2020 roundtable from Liberty Nation TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the LibertyNation.com YouTube channel where you'll get so many video and audio presentations you won't know what to do with them all, except that you will like them all. I'm Tim Donner. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>